The Great Sphinx of Egypt is the largest stone monolith statue on Earth. It took nearly 20 years to fully excavate the Great Sphinx. Since this time, the Sphinx has undergone a lot of restoration, no longer taking on the appearance of being unfinished or, to the keener eyed, severely eroded. Why alter such an important artifact? Why not preserve them in their found state? After all, we have no idea of what the builders initially intended them to look like. Just how old are these statues? Are they even older than the pyramids? I tend to suspect yes. Not only do they show evidence of millennia of rainfall, but also submersion under salt water. But the most intriguing fact about the sphinxes is their hidden openings. Openings I suspect were the reason for the quote, restoration. One of the outcomes of these modern manipulations upon the most important ancient monument on earth was the concealment of hidden passages that dot the Sphinx's design. Many initial reports of the Sphinx included details of three or four openings around the Sphinx leading to complex tunnel systems, containing tombs with alien artifacts. Something within these tunnel systems prompted the Egyptian government and even the CIA to step in and restrict access on the grounds of quote, the nation's security. What is a Sphinx? Why choose this creature to devote such effort into creating? A strange story about the Great Pyramid of Giza appeared in the March 2000 issue of the Egyptian magazine, Rose El Youssef. According to the article in 1988, French Egyptologist Louis Caparat discovered an alien mummy within a secret room found in a crystalline transparent case. It was believed to be a hybrid, which is a mix between an extraterrestrial race and human DNA. A papyrus found near the body tells of this being's encounter with the pharaoh Khufu. According to Ancient Code's anonymous source at the Egyptian Antiquities Department, the mummy of what appears to be an alien had inscriptions upon the tomb that showed that this was being a counselor to the pharaoh and was named Osirune, meaning star or sent from heaven. The body was said to have been buried with great respect and care and was accompanied by a number of strange artifacts made of a synthetic material that is not found in any other Egyptian tomb. Also, the source claimed it's unclear what sex it was, but it had unusual reptilian type skin, no external ears and overly large almond shaped eyes. The source claimed that the discovery has caused great controversy among Egyptian officials who want to keep it hidden until a plausible explanation for the strange mummy can be made. Numerous select specialists have visited the site. Regardless of the wild claims, there are indeed tunnels beneath the Sphinx and they have been covered up by authorities for some reason. According to author Peter Tomkin in his book Secrets of the Great Pyramid, some Arabian authors have reported that Al Mamun found a sarcophagus with a stone statue in the shape of a man. They say that within the statue lie a body wearing a breastplate of gold set with precious stones, an invaluable sword on his chest, and a carbuncle ruby on his head the size of an egg, which shone like the light of day. With many of the tunnels beneath the Sphinx being unexplored, but according to geophysical surveys, containing large unknown metal objects, it is only a matter of time before Egypt's secrets are out in the open. Thanks for watching guys, take care. Hi guys, so many theories have been put forward over the years as to the purpose of the pyramids, this being a direct result of the lack of any real evidence for their function. However, what if I were to tell you that the pyramids were a sophisticated protection structure built to house a once functioning Stargate transport system? A transport system or machine that is still there. I have found substantial Egyptian writings on highly developed knowledge of earth, the stars, life and death. The Acre Sphinx of the ancient Egyptians was a divine leonine beast, having two symmetrical torsos, each with its own head. The two halves of the Acre were located on opposite ends of the horizon, one lying to the east and one lying to the west. According to the ancient Egyptians, each breast of the Acre contains a portal or gateway leading to what they called an underworld. The sun was believed to pass through the eastern Acre gate at sunrise. Then at sunset it would pass through the western acre gate. This would mean that there is another sphinx with the use of remote controlled robots, red writings of an unknown language have been discovered within hidden tunnel systems beneath the great pyramids. These tunnels led to four doors, 
still with their seals. Interesting to note, the tunnels in which these robots traversed are not big enough to fit a human, yet they are scrawled in an unknown writing. These markings were found in a pyramid that the Egyptologists claim was built by Pharaoh Khufu. Almost immediately after this discovery, Dr. Zahi Hawass, Minister of Antiquities, ordered that a wall be constructed around the pyramid complex, supposedly to protect the pyramids from being damaged by the public. It turns out that these tunnels may lead to the burial chamber of an Egyptian god known as Osiris. It has also been reported by numerous sources that the US military and the CIA have been securing the pyramid complex, along with the Egyptian military. The document on the Egyptian mysteries by the 3rd century teacher Iamblichus describes the ceremony within the secret teachings into the mysteries of Osiris, the science of will. He states that a novice was blindfolded and led through a door in the breast of the Sphinx, through the gate that leads to a fourth place, and it may have all been thanks to a deity known as Thoth, who invented writing, medicine, magic, and the Egyptian civil and religious practices. And also the thing I believe they are hiding, a way of communicating with the supposed dead god Osiris. I suspect this was the creation of a portal. He was said to have been a great magician who knew all that is hidden under the heavenly vault. With the help or teaching of another god Anubis, he also created the first mummification rituals in Egypt. These entities along with Thoth created something that protected the moon and the sun from destruction by the god Set. If I'm correct in my translation, then Osiris, Anubis, Ra and many others came through a portal, making them either an alien, a god or dead. Set being a destructive cosmic force capable of destroying our sun and moon which Thoth managed to protect us from. The physical remains of Osiris, and I believe others too, which could confirm my hypothesis, have been found and covered up. The tunnels mentioned earlier lead to Osiris' tomb. However, although this discovery is an astonishing one, which could prove Osiris, Set, Ra, etc. to have been real beings, it has been cloaked in secrecy. No photographic evidence of remains exist and a military presence was immediately felt in the area after the find. I now feel I have collected substantial evidence to suspect Egyptian and other authorities around the world are hiding a highly advanced device or structure under the pyramids of Giza and may span the African continent, crisscrossing the ley lines of earth and the path of the sun with Egyptian secret teachings being openly accessible and telling of portals which were created with the help of gods illustrated as non-human entities, Osiris's tomb being exposed as discovered and shut away from the public. Unknown writings in impossible passageways, it is only a matter of time before what is hidden is exposed to the world. When one explores the most fascinating and ancient of structures resting all over our planet, you will inevitably be confronted by baffling feats on engineering and ingenuity, tasks that, to modern man, escape understanding or indeed explanation. The main consensus regarding these ancient structures has always been a tricky thing to explain. To claim that these marvelous structures were built by primitive people with only primitive tools at their disposal does not only seem absurd to most who have visited such sites, but ignorant of their true past grandeur and the specific characteristics of each of these places. Ancient sites, such as Giza, Machu Picchu, among many others, still contain very confusing artifacts, anomalous evidence, which tells a very different story to that of mainstream history. Apart from the Baghdad battery, largely claimed to have been an ancient form of electroplating, there has been little in the way of physical evidence to suggest the use of electricity within the academically researched ancient times. Yet, there are many remnants left, which suggest such activities. Not only are there countless clear examples of past machine work stone, but most importantly, there is evidence of errors made by these same tools, misstarts and discovered fault lines, these particular stones discarded, laid bare in the quarries, revealing all the hallmarks of the machine engineering that went into building these wonderful places, these artifacts, once rubbish, now historical treasures. They can tell you the shape and movements of the tools that were being used, showing just how these machines cut into the stones, core drillings also discarded during manufacture, and cut stones discarded 
due to faults and cracks, revealing the complete preliminary cut marks left by the ancient stonecutters. These fragments of past activities are clearly some of the most important in unraveling these sites' ultimate secrets, yet it is rarely shared in the public arena, and even less frequently researched by official bodies. Along with this vast and perplexing array of remnants, mercilessly left where they fell, strewn amongst the debris of disruption, lay countless extremely hardy machine stone jars, vessels made from some of the hardest rocks on Earth. Some of these jars were made with a round bottom, perfectly machined, balanced on a base no bigger than the tip of a chicken's egg. Sir William Flinders Petrie ultimately realized that only lathe turning could have produced the symmetry and balance found on thousands of these bowls and vases. And Petrie was no fool. In 1894, he founded his own archaeological body, the Egyptian Research Account, which later became the British School of Archaeology in Egypt. He stated, for example, a bowl maker attained curves of exact circularity by rotating the bowl around a fixed blade and formed a lip by shifting the centering of the bowl. Another round-bottom vase had walls of such uniform thickness that it balanced perfectly on a curved base. To have a very well-respected researcher and specialist of the ancient Egyptians to admit to a conviction of the use of power tools in these pots' construction seems like quite a stunning position to take, especially when one considers that while metal chisels could have been used to shape soft limestone within ancient Egyptian times, the metals that were available to them – copper, bronze, and during the first millennium BCE, wrought iron – were far too soft to work such rock into such exquisite designs. It seems Petri would like to remain honest regarding his conclusions, yet also incomplete with his explanations, preferring to let the receiver of said information make their own realizations, preferring to avoid complication by a, by this time, rather visible enemy. One could only conclude that these relics and ancient monuments thereof were not the work of the Egyptians but further evidence to suggest that these baffling structures were built far before the ancient Egyptians, before academic understandings, by a highly technologically advanced pre-cataclysm civilization. We find it difficult to see how such work was undertaken, or an explanation for our finding can be made without the use of power tools. Thankfully, the more we learn regarding these enigmatic places, the more we become aware of regarding their true history and the closer, it seems, we become to finding those who built them.